Ted, good to uh, good to speak with you again. We have an interesting company to look at today. We do indeed. So uh, anyone who has been watching the news, Hertz, a uh, really big uh, car rental business or vehicle rental business, uh, has been going through some real battering in the last few years, and especially so during the COVID crisis. Um, so they actually filed for Chapter 11. Now, they're still uh, an ongoing business, but it is definitely challenging to say the least. So just to give you some context about this company before we go into the financials. So in the last five years, their share price has moved from a high of $44 to $1.72. So that is a significant drop. Now, to be fair, and as you're showing on the screen there, Ted, you know, their rivals, Avis and Enterprise, are also suffering, but their financials are not as bad as Hertz. And that's because of a couple of decisions that they made. So they uh, acquired a company called Dollar, what's it called? Dollar 30 Automotive Group for $2.6 billion. And uh, that resulted in them having to, well, that resulted in an increase in their debt, which they've been struggling to pay off. And in fact, they, they actually couldn't pay off a recent $400 million um, amount to their lenders. So, you know, drop in, in rentals, uh, drop in demand. They couldn't even sell off some of their used cars, which is also a big part of their business. Uh, and then a rising pile of debt that they've been finding very difficult to pay off. So um, not surprising they filed for chapter 11. Uh, they're still ongoing and it will be really interesting to see what their finances show here, Ted. Absolutely. So I'm um, good to see you again, Moeed. So let's have a look at their finances. We'll jump straight in. So um, here we go, looking at their account audited by uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, a very small um, uh, accountancy outfit. Um, so let's start off with a profit and loss account. Here it is. And uh, we're looking at the, um, uh, the right hand column 2018, the middle column 2019 and the left hand column is 2020 and the first thing we notice uh, the top line little bit of a growth from 2018 to 2019 and then look at that a massive fall in sales uh, it basically halved the business um, you know and that is you know that is covid for us you know that it's just you know the whole world just shot down uh, and suddenly these guys were kind of like oh my god i've got all these cars for hire and nobody wants to hire them so really really stressed out meanwhile so they got the vehicle and operating revenue so they've managed to kind of reduce those as well the depreciation is pretty much the same because they still got the fleet they're still sitting there so they're still depreciating so that doesn't really change um, and this means that in effect uh, that they've gone from an uh, you know what I've what I've really done is taken these two numbers here which is the cost of running the fleet and the fleet depreciation and treated those as cost of sales okay so if we treat those as cost of sales they've managed to go from a gross profit of 1.5 billion in 2018 to a gross loss of 400 million in 2020. Now, gross profit is basically, it's kind of like, it, it's the product that you're selling. So if you sell the product for less than it costs you, you're not onto a winner. Uh, and these guys making a 400 million uh, loss in 2020, that's really gonna hurt their business. We then got the, um, uh, the SG&A, uh, and you can see that they've been, they've really contracted that. So that's this line. Let me clear my um, uh, drawings so we can see that. So that's this line here, and we can see that they're really been scaling back, and, and uh, you know, they've almost halved it um, during the year. That'll be putting staff onto furlough, closing factories, doing everything they possibly can. But it's a, it's a big fixed cost business. You know, they've got, you know, they've got um, the, you know, the operations to run, they pay the rent on their, on their showrooms, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so really difficult to come off that. And then we see down here, and this really reflects their business model. So they split the interest out between the vehicle interest and the non vehicle interest. So the non-vehicle interest will be the bank debt that they've got that they borrowed in order to run their business. The vehicle interest is the interest they pay to buy the vehicles. So as you mentioned, 
they are, uh, you know, they're, they're using the vehicles, they buy the vehicles, or you know, they lease the vehicles, they're paying interest, and then they are selling those vehicles on. That's part of their business model. So these guys, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a, uh, you know, it, when it works, it works. Um, but even then, looking at the bottom line, these guys, I mean, they've been making a loss. 2018, 2019, 2020, they've been booking losses every single year. 2020, obviously exacerbated 33% net loss, <coughs> which is big by anybody's standards. Uh, and, and that's really weighing down on this business. Let's jump off and look at the balance sheet. Here is the balance sheet. Now I'm going to admit here, uh, Moe, there's a few bits and pieces that I'm not 100% sure of in terms of the balance sheet. Um, I haven't really kind of gone into a huge amount of depth. I'm kind of looking at this at a very kind of, you know, high level. So if I wanted to know the business in a bit more, um, I'd, I'd need to do some more digging. Um, but what we see is, you know, first of all, the balance sheet shrunk. So if we look at the total assets, for example, 25 billion has shrunk down to about 17 billion um, uh, during the year, okay, as the, as the business has really contracted. Um, up here, they've got, what's interesting is that they've got cash and then they've got restricted cash. So I'm not sure what the restricted cash um, relates to, but they obviously have to hold cash in relation to the vehicles and non-vehicles. And this will be, you know, part of their banking covenants um, where the banks, you know, want to kind of limit their exposure. But they've got quite a lot of cash. You know, they've got a billion of cash sitting on the balance sheet. Um, here are their receivables relating to vehicle and non-vehicle. Um, and uh, really down to here, these numbers. So all of these numbers up here, this is their current assets. These things that they own, which are cash, are going to become cash quite soon. Uh, and that's about, you know, 3.9 billion in 2019. Um, and uh, drops to about 2.7 billion in 2020. Then the bottom half is their kind of their assets and their assets they split out here between um, the vehicles. So these are the things that they need in order to kind of, you know, rent out to, to, to you and I, for example. And look at this. I mean, the vehicle, you know, they've just reduced 17 billion down to seven and a half. They have just, you know, they're just getting rid of their vehicles. They're scaling right back. Um, and then there's the rest is the kind of, you know, the, the, the property plant and equipment, et cetera, et cetera, which they kind of, you know, used to, to, to run the business. So this is this here. This is the really big number here that just shows an, a business which has just contracted massively um, during the year. Um, if we look at the bottom half of the balance sheet, we can see the um, the, the 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 big number. So uh, the the top part here. So this is the um, uh, these numbers here are the kind of current current liabilities and the current liabilities compared with the current assets look absolutely fine. I mean, we're looking at about 880 billion um, in uh, 2020. That's these two numbers added together compared with 2.7 billion. So 800 million of liabilities compared with 2.7 billion of current assets looks fine. You know, look, looks good to me. Um, but the numbers, there's lots of big numbers down here. And there's some numbers here, for example. So if we look at the debt, you'll notice that the vehicle, the non-vehicle, sorry, the vehicle, let me start again. The vehicle debt has shrunk. Okay, so this basically is, you know, as the vehicles have shrunk, so the vehicle debt has shrunk. That kind of makes sense. Um, but we see this number here. Um, and I'm not 100% sure exactly what that is. It says liabilities subject to compromise. Now, I don't know exactly what a liability subject to compromise is, um, but that is a 5 billion of some form of debt, um, uh, which is sitting down there on the balance sheet. And if we look at the equity, the equity, the net assets of 1.9 billion has shrunk to 93 million. And that suggests that these guys are about to go into negative equity on their balance sheet. Now, that's not the end of the world, but it's not a very nice place to be. That's a bit like uh, Moe buying your house on a million pound mortgage and then finding out your house is only worth half a million pounds. OK, it's not the end of the world, but negative equity is never very nice for anybody. So their balance sheet is really they, there's there's kind of there's nothing left in the balance sheet, so to speak. Let's take a look at their cash flow statement. 
So here is their cash flow. So top line is the, the first part of the cash flow is reconciling the, the profit or in their case, their loss with the cash. Um, the first thing we notice is that they are generating cash. OK, so that's good. So, um, you know, we've seen some businesses where they are making a profit and, and actually have negative cash flow. They do have positive cash flow. Uh, that is good. And that's mainly because a big part of their expense is this number here. It's the depreciation on their vehicles, which is obviously they depreciate them quite quickly. It kind of makes sense. You tend to, you know, if you hire from Hertz, you're hiring a new vehicle um, and then they're going to sell it um, uh, uh, as a second hand. It'll go down in value pretty quickly. Down the bottom half of the cash flow, um, we see the, uh, the, the the cash from investing. OK, so we'll see in the previous two years, there's been a lot of investing going on. And in this year, it was really divesting. So here we notice basically they're just selling their vehicles. So they're shrinking their business, trying to generate cash um, uh, it, it, in order to survive effectively. Um, and as you mentioned, to pay off some debt. Um, and they're using that cash then uh, to pay down um, uh, the, the, the vehicle debt um, uh, that they've got. And then here is the issuance of vehicle debt. Um, and I think this will be this, this restricted one. Um, and so that effectively comes down to the, uh, the, the, the bottom of the cash flow, which is on the next page, um, which shows uh, in effect um, the net cash used um, in financing activities uh, is about um, uh, uh, five uh, five point four billion. So, what are we re uh, reading into this? Um, they are, you know, they're, they're, they're still cash positive. They're shrinking. They're divesting, um, and they're using that divestment to pay off to pay down their debt. You know, they still got money in the bank, um, cash and cash equivalents at the end of the period one point uh, six billion. Um, They've got to trade that they've got to trade their way out of this though so you know they've shrunk their business um you know have they shrunk it down do they have a core business which is profitable you know like any business the first thing you do is you'd find the bits that weren't profitable the marginal parts you'd close the offices you'd you know you'd fire the staff you know you'd basically just hunker down to you know your kind of your own backyard that you know really well uh, and you would um uh, you know see if you can um uh, you know turn that into a profitable core business and that's really what we're seeing coming through the um through the numbers moe you know it's it's a you know it'd be very interesting to see what it looks like this is year end 31st december 2020 so you know we've obviously got a while to go before they're only gonna they're gonna tell us what they did in 2020 uh you know during um uh 2021 which we're we're, we're in at the moment um interesting enough if we look at the you know you mentioned the the share price um, and, and here is their share price. So a couple of things to notice here. Um, the market cap is about 270 million. Um, the net asset value, so the value of the, of the balance sheet, you remember the book value is only 93 million. So there's still a reasonable amount of goodwill in there. Um, and you'll notice here, I've just highlighted up at the top um, the, uh, the ticker and the ticker says OTC markets. Now, OTC is over the counter. And over the counter means that you can buy shares in this company, but you can't buy it through a stock exchange. OK, so it's not publicly traded. It is traded, but it's traded over the counter. People are kind of phoning up their brokers and saying, can you get me some shares, which means it's much less liquid. So quite interesting looking at the, you know, the journey of, of this company. So all the way up. Uh, this was the global financial crisis um, uh, where, you know, banks are going bust. Uh, and I remember going on holiday, um, you know, in, in that period, you know, and you turn up and suddenly, you know, there's, there's no cars for hire because the car hire companies couldn't get the finance from the banks but because the banks had all gone bust. So that was a major, major problem. Anyway, these guys, they survive. They carry on all the way up. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened at the top here, um, but they've been in decline. So they've they've always been struggling. And maybe it's the kind of the advent of other car company, uh, car hire companies, you know, very competitive market. 
um, lots of, you know, lots of, you know, there's lots of choice. There's lots of sort of internet choice now, you know, compare the market, you know, you can compare car hire prices. You know, I certainly don't hire from Hertz. It's, it's, it's expensive, you know, all the way down. They then just ticked along a bit. And then there is our COVID um, and bang, they're straight. You know, they just, they just fall off a, um, uh, they, they fall off a perch. So that's when they declared bankruptcy um, and then they've been bouncing around. So you're absolutely right. It's $1.72. Are they going to come back? Who knows? But once again, I think, Moe, we're looking at a company here, which is it's very cheap. It's cheap for a reason. It may stutter. It may fall over. It may go bang. Um, you think about the kind of the long term future driverless cars, you know, Ubers and taxis. You know, do they have a long term future or actually is this a nice little business? And once it's scaled back and got out of kind of all those overseas markets and really focused on the kind of, you know, the core part of its business that it's know it's profitable. You know, have you, you know, is this the opportunity to pick up a winner? I don't know. I don't know the business. I don't know the industry that well. Um, but it's certainly it's interesting, you know, in a world of Teslas and, 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 and Amazons, which are priced in in, you know, thousands of, of uh, you know, multiples of earnings. Um, these guys, well, they have no earnings. You know, maybe maybe there's an opportunity to to pick up, a, a, you know, a few shares in a company which is very, very cheap. On the other hand, maybe it's cheap for a reason. Yeah, so that's interesting. So definitely not one for the faint-hearted. You've got to you've got to have a lot of courage for this one and know your stuff. Yeah, so or, was... or, or I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't bet your shirt on it. So you know, this is kind of you know when we talk about portfolio management, you know, you kind of have you know your core, you know, this is my retirement investment fund, and then you have your play money, your Robin Hood, your kind of yeah. you know, let's let's go and play on Reddit and, and Bitcoin. Don't put your shirt in it, um, but certainly if you like the business, if you certainly if you know the industry and you know the other players and you and you kind of and you like the company you like the management you respect them then maybe you know put something you can afford to lose but don't put you know this is this is up at the wild west gambling end of investment um theory i would say moe yeah so no that was really interesting and i think we should probably look at uh, other companies that have been uh hit by the covid quite badly so airline companies as well so that that could be one for the future so uh, what are your thoughts about uh, about this video uh, audience uh, like share subscribe do send us uh, a message if you want us to look at a particular company for you whether you are planning to do business with them or maybe they are your clients and you want to understand a bit more about their financials maybe you want to invest in that company you want to hear about our analysis on the fundamentals uh, or maybe you have a job interview with this company and you want to sound impressive uh, and be able to understand their business and their finances. So leave us a message. And until the next video, we'll see you shortly. Thank you again, Ted. Good to see you, Moeed. Have fun.